are always a tough one to get right. It's a combination of having a lot of variety but not boring the hell out of you because let's be honest, going around in circles in real life is very different to doing it in a video game. It's all about the interaction, the skill, the control quick to pick up, easy to master, and that's where arcade racers come in. Throughout the years, they've always been the most popular. Sega Rally, Virtua Racing, Ridge Racer, you name it, they always get that instant pick up and play, but a lifetime to master hook, and that's what makes arcade racers great. That magical equilibrium between arcade and simulation can be a tough ass. And right back from when I was a kid, Codemasters have been doing that since the dawn of games. Yes, C64, Spectrum, Amiga, Atari ST, and many, many more. From the likes of BMX Simulator, ATV Simulator, Tilt, even Pinball. There is no doubting the impact and influence they had across the 8 and 16-bit world. Even though the Darling Brothers have long since gone, Codemasters are still pumping out those titles. But here in Dirt 5, they take a bit of a shift, kind of mixing the old Onrush style of game made a couple of years ago from Codemasters. This does run under the exact same engine, but it's a multi-format, multi-platform, cross-generational title that really has its work cut out to deliver the goods. Now, it is a little later than planned, due to all the next-gen activity that I've been involved in, but here I wanted to take a look at every single version from the Xbox One S right up to the Xbox One X, because let's be honest, as great as the next generation of consoles are, this is where the bread and butter of sales are going to be, and this is most likely the version you're going to be playing or picking up now that it's been discounted and is available at an even better price. So this analysis is taking all that into account, and to wrap it all up, I'm also looking at the next-gen versions on the Series S and the Series X. I do not have PlayStation 5 code available. So there's a lot to talk about, a lot to cover, let's dive in. As I say, across all versions, the controls, the track layouts, the racing types and the variety the game offers is its most impactful element. It really has loads to pick from, point to point, flag to flag, it's got a great balance of grip, drifting, braking. The example here is it's not really a simulation title because the traction on gravel or snow would reduce massively, but surfaces are pretty consistent and that all of that is for fun and not for simulation. When you're playing this game, think more Forza Horizon and not F1. Now, it doesn't matter which version you're playing, the visuals are exceptionally strong. You have to take into account they are designed to be whipping past you at 100 plus miles an hour or more, yet they manage to deliver excellent material quality and density the triangle count here is vast on some tracks, along with the sheer scale and the view distance ahead. A dynamic time of day creates a varied assortment of tracks, conditions, and these are all blended well. Night is obviously the hardest one to get right, and like some middle of day conditions, it can expose some of the sacrifices, but nothing is ever truly bad, just weaker than other parts. Now on the layouts, the weather and the post effects, it's a great mixture of Motorstorm meets Drive Club at points. Mid-pack whipping mud all around, jostling for position while splashing through puddles as a storm whips up ahead is really atmospheric. As is the ground deformation, abundant alpha and particle systems all running on the GPU, it really swamps the screen at time with action, post effects and cars. It's all wrapped up with some volumetric lighting and an evolution of the on-rush engine which delivers great physics itself, but here that's all been ramped up with even better physics, destruction. These are all combined to give a beautiful level of sunsets on the horizon, dust clouds blowing across tracks or red sun-drenched African roads, with 12 vehicles all rushing past you. The sheer amount of tracks and variety is what makes this so much fun. Lapping races, point-to-point -point races, snow drifting and many more. Even then, you can make your own in the playground as I've already covered a few months back and share them online or try out other people's creations. The online modes are also packed offering months of fun on and offline and in terms of a smorgasbord of content, this should keep you entertained all the way through and past those Christmas months. <laughs> Now we get to the comparison, it's probably why most of you are here. The game is packed with options. All consoles have a performance or quality mode, the current generation anyway, which will do the same thing with varying levels of success. Quality is the best for image conscious players, offering up the highest IQ via better draw distance, texture filtering, geometry count, tessellation, alpha effects, crowds, lighting and shadows, all topped off with the highest resolution of the two modes. The cost is frame rate, as no matter the console here, again, 
aside the next generation ones, all of them target 30 FPS, giving each machine a full 33 milliseconds to draw that magic. <laughs> The performance mode drops this cap and now shoots it up to 60 FPS by halving the frame time down to 16.6 milliseconds. The cost here is the reverse of all I've just described. Sometimes comically so in those pre-track runs, yet 100% worth it as once the flag drops you never see it again. Well most of it. The only biggest sacrifice I can see obviously on the Xbox One S is trilinear filtering and performance mode over the other versions. Many of the other sacrifices are consistent across all versions. The crowd is now gone predominantly, the LOD is paired back, shadow maps are now much blockier, car models and geometry is cut back, light maps pop in very close on all formats, and it appears fill rate and triangle bound most of the time. And this is obvious with the fact they cut down the tessellation, the geometry models, the cars, the background, the dirt on the ground. Everything is sacrificed, including shadow maps across all versions, going from the absolute worst in the Xbox One S to the absolute best in the Series X. Then you can see the difference on screen. It's quite vast at times, but there is a huge gulf in power between the systems. And when you're pushing high frame rates at this level, these are the kind of sacrifices you have to make. So on the base consoles, in terms of sacrifices, it's the right choice and it works predominantly so long as you're at the front of the pack. But if you drop to the back of the pack or mid pack, then as you can see at the start of races, performance is heavily affected. It runs an adaptive V-Sync on these base consoles in both modes and it can tear on the 30fps and 60fps mode. But generally, by and large, it's hovering somewhere around the 40s to 50s and that just doesn't feel great for a racing game. It's more consistent in the 30 FPS mode and that's the one I would choose for these consoles but it's great that the choice is there. If you're not heavily affected then dive in and play that title. Like I say if you are predominantly at the front of races you will not feel the dips but as you can see with these side by side lap for lap comparisons between the Xbox One S and the PS4 not only is it performing better in terms of actual overall frame rate but it's also performing better unsurprisingly in the resolution stakes. All versions target a reconstruction element but they vary heavily relying on it in the performance mode and using it less often in the quality mode but that reconstruction does help the overall image and surprisingly the Xbox One S is the lowest of the lot. In quality mode it targets 1600 by 900 can dip a little bit below around 1440 by 810 the PS4 comes in at 1920 by 1080 all the time didn't catch any points blower probably as dynamic did catch it in the performance mode though this is where the biggest gap pops up the Xbox One S now targets 960 by 540 very very often reconstructing back and it averages hangs around 1280 by 720 that's the best I can see it does try and reconstruct back to 1080p the PS4 does a similar job except this time it's now targeting 1600 by 900 and it can dip down to somewhere around 720p. Not ideal, huge level of sacrifice in there but like you've just seen it does have high quality overall and it is trying to push 60fps but largely both versions fail to do it. For me I would pick the 30fps mode, it still dips, it still tears but it's more consistent than the 60fps mode because in a racing game that's what you need, consistency of input, consistency of control and unfortunately both these versions suffer too heavily for me so I can't recommend the 60fps mode but I'm glad that it is there. So now we move over to the bigger, the premium consoles, the Pro and the Xbox One X. In quality mode, the Pro targets around 1800p, 3200 by 1800, drops down to somewhere around 1440p, hovers somewhere in between the two, 1620p. The Xbox One X targets a full 3840 by 2160, rarely hits that, uh, even in the quality mode. It targets, hovers somewhere around 3200 by 1800, can drop as low as 1620. Again, it's generally higher resolution, and quality than the PS4 Pro. The 30 FPS on both of these is bang on, there's no issues at all, it's the preferred option if you don't have another one. But then we move to the frame rate mode and this is where the Xbox One X really pulls ahead of the Pro. So this still tries to target or reconstruct back to 3840 but it heavily relies on that reconstruction and it's actually around a half width, 1920 by 1080 and it hovers somewhere around 1440p 
get a little bit lower than that but it's certainly a sharper slightly cleaner image than what we get on the pro which again targets 3200 by 1800 but it, it again reconstructs from a 1600 by 900 p half width and height resolution and then it scales that dynamically somewhere around that 1440p level but it probably needs to go a little bit higher as you can see by the performance the pro doesn't hold 60 fps doesn't hold it clear enough for my liking the xbox one x does a much much better job they all still dip but if i had to choose between two i would definitely choose the xbox one x it's the most consistent of that 60 fps mode and it's slightly sharper and cleaner as well so definitely the best version of the older generations by actually a good chalk in the heavier battles and the heavier tracks and then we move to the premium consoles the new generation the series s and the series x the Series S surprisingly still delivers that same 120 FPS mode, but the difference on these two new consoles is the fact that quality mode and the resolution mode all target 60 FPS and the high frame rate targets 120. But going to that on the Series S is a massive, massive sacrifice. Effectively, the Series S at 120 mode is the Xbox One S version at 60 FPS. That means a reconstruction from 960 by 540 hovering somewhere around 1280 by 720 most of the time. It's very blurry, it's very dithered, it's very heavily aliased, there's lots of blurry textures, low filtering, low geometry, and to me, it's great that it's there, and as you can see by performance, it does a pretty decent job. It tears a hell of a lot more than the other versions now, it tears all the way across the screen, but for me, it's too big a sacrifice. I'm really happy and impressed that the team managed to get it in there, but it's, it's just too big a hit to the image quality for me on a 45 or bigger screen, 60 inch screen I'm playing it on it, it just looks quite blurry and quite messy. The Series X is a much better job, that now hovers somewhere between 1920 by 1080 up to 1440, it can dip a little bit below 1080p, but it holds 120 FPS far more often. And then in the other modes, it's the pre preference for me, the Series X in quality mode still targets a full 3840 by 2160, hits it pretty much all the time, and it's a lot 60, there's no issues there at all, a little bit of dips, a little bit of tear, it's very, very, very minor, have to be a huge amount of impact, you can barely notice it. So for me, in terms of preference, the Series X is the best in quality mode at 60 FPS. The 120 FPS mode is great and you can definitely appreciate it in driving games like first person shooters and fighters, especially on lateral movement when you're sliding around corners and drifting with lots of background geometry moving across the screen. You can definitely feel the judder and skips and tearing there. But aside that, the gap, like I said before, it's, it's not as big between 30 and 60 and the appreciative improvement on Detail, shading, texture quality, filtering, tessellation, geometry, resolution, all of that is too big a sacrifice. 220 FPS for me. I would stick with 60 FPS at 4K. It's the best version of the lot. Closely followed by the Series S because you've got that choice, although that's a little blurrier for my liking compared to the 30 FPS version on the Xbox One X because it doesn't hit that level of resolution. It hovers somewhere between... 1440p and 1080 sometimes below it just doesn't really go much above that in any mode uh, so generally i prefer the series x then the series s stroke xbox one x then the pro then the ps4 then the xbox one that's heavily sacrificed it's really starting to show its age now and even though the team have done a great job getting the game together and getting it out on that platform the performance mode is suffers for it and the Series S, there's a heavy amount of sacrifices to get to that 120 FPS mode. And I think they should have worked on probably getting a 60 FPS mode of locked 1440p. That would have been a nice choice there between that, that console. But I understand that all these things take time and you've got to work out the effort and whether it's worth it and ROI and all that kind of good stuff. So as it stands, it's a great game. It's packed full of content. The controls are excellent. It feels like a kind of game you would go and chuck pounds and 50p's into an arcade machine time and time again. Well... 10 P's to when I used to play it, but it's a superb, fun, enjoyable title. It feels the best on the higher frame rates. It controls brilliantly. It's got loads of content. A little bit disappointed with the sound. I think the sound's quite weak. Uh, the engines are quite good in your car, but you can't hear the cars around you. There's not much reverb when you go through tunnels and areas. It doesn't change the reverb and acoustics. There's, there's more work they could have done on the sound of the engines, but most people probably wouldn't notice that. That's one of the areas that I think could... Be significantly improved but visually presentation wise content wise it's an absolute astounding title and like I say 
it's now pretty cheap so you would struggle to find a better bargain to take you through those christmas periods and it could be a perfect present if someone you love or someone you like actually likes racing games because there's not much else on the market and this is a cracking title to kick off the next generation under the tree christmas treats that many people may be getting come christmas day anyway i'm out but if you enjoyed this or anything else you know what to do like subscribe share and all that good stuff and i will see you on the next one